Since 1972, in the first week of July, thousands of people from different backgrounds, religions, and beliefs, go on a journey to remote national forest in North America. Focusing on the 4th of July, America Independence Holiday, as a holy day of prayer for peace and freedom, they gather to experience living temporarily in a cooperative community in the woods in harmony with the earth. There are no fees, no leader and no money is exchanged. Everyone is welcome. I think the Hopi predicted the rainbow, that a, a, a tribe of people will uh, materialize of all different nations and all different colors, and they will call themselves the warriors of the rainbow. Now, do we consciously try to create ourselves to fulfill this prophecy? I would submit to you that you can't make us do anything, that there would be no way that you could make all of these people to show up and tell them to act like we do. This is my ancestral land, the Maui band of the Pitt Rivers, and I came up to ceremony with some of these people. At the center pole yesterday, I prayed for world peace. It was very powerful because other people, there was what, 20,000 other people praying for the same thing. The gathering has always been very special. For me, it's the only chance we have in this culture to experience tribal society, which we've destroyed on this continent, or tried to almost all over the world. And uh, I think it's really important we try to experience ourselves what it's like to live without all of these uh, police responsibilities, laws, to live really in peace and harmony, just with love with people. It's a unique, fascinating, <laughs> daring concept. <laughs> for my spiritual battery, yeah. you know? Like I've, my mom's been bringing me here since I was one. And uh, I just love it. I love being able to come out here and hang out with all the, the nice, loving people and just to get smiles everywhere you turn. I mean, how can you be unhappy when everybody's smiling? First gathering, she was one year old. And uh, we've been going ever since. Our, our life revolves around it in a way. I mean, we always count on coming here and living with our family and our village in the woods and depend on that to recharge us through the year. When I uh, build a fire, I do it in love for the people that yeah. are around me here. That's why the Rainbow Family lives, because we're all a community. We're all doing a tiny little bit, even if it's just striking the match to start the fire or fixing a buggy for a sister who can't do it herself. It's all a big conglomeration of people putting things together to make it work. How do rainbow gatherings work? Anybody know? Magic hat. The magic hat. Thank you. It's a circle. Okay, we form a circle here. We pass the magic hat. We put money in the magic hat. It goes out to supply. They go to town and buy food. It comes back to the kitchens. The kitchens bring it here. We eat the food. We pass the magic hat. And it all goes around in a circle. We're about to have a very nice experience with one of our true elders, Mr. Ram Das, who wrote, wrote the book, Be Here Now. As far as our teachings go, our tribe is very young, but he was one of our elders that helped form our thought processes, form the way we think, and really taught us and helped us in the path of being here now. An astral dream that the, we all have imprinted in our mind. People sitting together by the fire. Loving nature, trees, and wind. Another thing, there is 
raise there's protest protest against the culture We have our Babylon rolls. The interesting thing is to try to uh, walk a path where you do the dance that's required out in Babylon and still stay true to yourself, you know? And up here, there's a lot of people who pull that off really well. Many of them don't dance much in Babylon at all. They actually manage to live in this constant rainbow world that they've created for themselves and that's the most powerful thing about the whole scene here is that people have shown all of us that they can create their own reality that they can be the person that they want to be that they can have livelihoods that they feel are honorable and that respect the earth and respect each other and respect uh, their good relations. Scapegoating, and that's really what we're looking at in our society is we have scapegoating, we use drugs as a scapegoat to get away from the fact that our society is falling apart, the world is changing at incredible speeds. You know, we're in the middle of an explosion and we don't even feel it. We don't even realize the world is, is rapidly getting out of control. The GMOs are happening all over. I mean, the thoughts, the, the internet is, is becoming a giant brain. This is an explosion of energy. So, which remember, we're in the belly of the beast. This is, this is empire. We're, we're in the world empire. Don't, don't kid yourself. And because we're there, we have this privileged place of showing, of modeling, which is what Rainbow, I think, does. It models for the world uh, how we could live. Even in our culture, even in the worst of the destroying empire, there's still hope. And that's, that's Rainbow for me. We came up from Humboldt, where there's a lot of forest defense still going on. They're still clear-cutting a lot of old-growth redwoods. Um, Humboldt right now is being cut by um, different lumber companies taking old growth redwoods and Douglas fir. There's also actions all the way up and down the west coast. I have been tree sitting for about, I think two and a half years, something like that. I really don't keep track of time anymore. Um, my current role as a tree sitter is primarily um, trainer, sitter, setter. I set things, I set villages, platforms, dream catchers, traverses, so people can live comfortably in trees. We'd never officially asked, but they came by, or people came by, and they, they thought it was good. They liked it, we've been being extra super safe. My baby. There we got. Prussix, I need Prussix. I got some for you. Okay. As a community outreach, tree sitting is very successful. We've trained so far probably, well we've trained several dozen people. What we're trying to do is get people interested and motivated and hopefully eager to go to either Humboldt County, Oregon, or other places that have forest defense issues going on. We're really, really grateful to the General Council and to the Forest Service for allowing this to go on. Very too good to stop by tonight because we are gonna oh, we are gonna play music in Jerusalem tonight.
Why am I here? Because this is the place that saved my life 15 years ago. This is the place that told me that there were other possibilities in the world. And this is where the models that such things can be actually exist. So this is where I came. I come here to be in the forest, hear these birds. And that while I'm looking at all the beautiful faces, there's all the green surrounding the mountains. This is a place where God gets a lot of work done because this is an awesome place that when you put a lot of people together with open hearts and good spirits, he can channel a lot of stuff. That otherwise, in the middle of February, in the winter of Minnesota, you're not so attuned to receiving. But here you can receive it. Even if you didn't know it was here and that you didn't know you were missing it and you didn't know you, were, you needed it. That happens here. People's lives are transformed. Um, these guys started, I don't know how long ago, I, they cook pancakes from early, as early as you wake up, as early as the birds. When, it, when the birds start, that's why it's called early bird. It's not only free, it's the best organic, vegetarian, yummiest, all naturally cooked in the woods, as early and as much as you can eat pancakes with love as main ingredient. I'm a partner yoga teacher, my name's Bill Wallen, and this is my first rainbow experience, it's been wonderful. And uh, I, I've uh, been sharing uh, my gifts with people here, I'm a mountain biker and I can help people fix their bikes. And I'm a guitar player, I've been jamming with people a lot. And, uh, I, uh, I'm a member of the Scroll community down in San Diego, that, that rainbow community down there, and so I've been wanting to come here. And Everybody's doing this great. Look here, we got a yo lo lotus. Three lotuses. Right now. These guys are advanced. They're just right on it. <laughs> So I, I've come here to uh, pray in the Cathedral of Nature because this is the only religion I have. If it, what, I mean, if I thought that out there that was all that there was, I mean, I would despair. I would want to take my life, you know. And when I'm out there, I just know that, well, there's something better, you know, and, and I can wait and I can experience in, in something better. But what are all these people going to do to pull together to make the new way happen because I think we don't need to lift a finger to uh, destroy Western civilization. It's going to fall under its own weight, just like communism did. And uh, the difference is, is that when communism fell, the United States of America bailed them out. But when the United States falls, the United States of America is not going to bail it out, itself out. You know, the Rainbow Family is going to have to do it. Right? Uh, what makes me come? Oh, this is family. This is the essence of what life is supposed to be. When we get together as a community and we work through the good, the bad, everything, you know. We go through emotions. People go through hard times, good times. There's brothers and sisters who've been hurt. Brothers and sisters who have things to work out that they're trying to find a way. And sometimes just a little hint of something from somebody will help answer all that they're looking for. And I appreciate that. This is one place that I think does more healing than anywhere in Babylon can handle. In Babylon, they 
Yeah, put up their prisons and feed us a lot of what we're supposed to do and be and whatnot. And I'm not sure who made those rules, so I don't like to play that game. <laughs> so the law, the law is part of the game. And, you know, if you're in the middle of a game, and as we are in Empire, you have to know how to play. It's like Monopoly, you know. Um, you may not have all the hotels, but you still can play the game. Um, Rainbow gives us some tools so that we can still play the game and then come back and learn what our hearts are like. So we can do that and then not forget who we are. As you see, feeling free. And here's the poem, the rainbow poem. Is, there's a poem line that's kind of, that I uh, use a lot, that's kind of the unofficial official rainbow poem of how it, how it works around here in these camps, around these fires, up and down these paths. It works this way. But take what you need, give what you can, where you can, when you can, however you can. In other words, lend a hand. And what happens then? Strangers become friends. Friends become family. Family becomes community. And community on the move. Now that's what I call the movement. Conscious person Which makes all lives the rest of on two levels at once. This level, and then he could call the soul level. And the soul level watches this level. Like when I when I had my stroke, the pain was so hard that it pushed me up to the soul uh, watching because the watcher doesn't, didn't experience the pain. I can meet any set of eyes in this place and we will witness together what we are experiencing. So I had experience of total alienation and running into a lot of angry people in my first few days to total love, which was really good to have, where not even being on any drugs, just experiencing real love, where we could actually get in a circle and hug each other, which I don't really do every day. I think I had to experience that negativity to break through. That was probably something in me that had to get shook out. It doesn't matter what you believe in, where you come from, where you face it. As long as you know you're part of a human family. taste, a touch, a, a feel, a moment of, of feeling ultimately in unity with one another, where I think we all truly in heart and mind would like to be. And I think this is a place where we can come together. And the more people that come together with a common prayer, the more opportunity for those waves and those ripples to reach out to the whole. So I just... Uh, I look for that essence in the human spirit, and this is the place to find it. To really be like the shamans of all of the tribes of the world, 
who are able to channel down the unified vision of the one and the only one before any separation. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to get back to the garden. We're trying to get to that place where we know the world, we know God, the way Adam and Eve knew before they ate. Before they ate. That's where we're working to get to. And this place, unknowingly and knowingly, is a reflection of that hunger that the Creator put us deep inside to get back to that place. Things get put in balance here. Because in the world of extreme sadness, there needs to be, for some period of time, a place of extreme joy. And in a place where, in a world where there's extreme abuse happening, there needs to be a place where there's extreme healing happening. And one good act balances out a whole hell of a lot of evil acts. We never know. We never know. So why do I come here? How can I not? How can I not? I'd see people crying out, they're just flailing, they're like a child, fresh from the womb, just they, they want this connectivity, you know. And most people, you know, we're all removed, I think we're all removed. And when we take the first step of saying we're all removed, then that brings us together. And I've seen a lot of, a lot of coming together. I've seen a lot of sharing. And I think that's healthy, especially in this day and age. Right now everybody is starting to circle out on Main Circle and they're praying for silence. Or they're, they're having a silence, which is a prayer for world peace. And all the children come together and we get all done up. And when the parade gets ready, we all come whooping and hollering out and break the silence. And then everybody comes in and rushes into the middle and there's drumming and everyone's crying and laughing and singing. I still haven't figured out how we're going to do it, but right now we got to meet once a year and get acquainted with one another, and uh, you know, so we recognize who we who we are. You know, when we see each other out there and we nod and we wink, we know who we are. 